Hey, yo, what's going on, my street people? Um, Time for a top five. Like I said in the intro, um, what is the top five going to be about on this episode of Think Tank? Because I don't really want to do another like playlist. So it's going to be part of Think Tank because it does involve top five stuff and um, what I think. So before I jump into it, um, like, come subscribe, hit the notification bell, share it with your friends, family, and enemies, and all that good jazz. Now that we've got that out the way, who's gonna be in my top five? And what is this top five about? It's the villains that need to be introduced into the MCU. Now, admittedly, this list isn't in any particular order or anything of that matter. It's just five villains that I think deserve to be in the MCU for some reason or another. Now, I have kind of leveled them as it were so you've got like avengers level um threats and then you've got end game level threats and like you've got things that could be a bit in between but a bit before and i'll let you know which ones they are as we get to them so first things first who is our first villain that should be introduced into the mcu all right we have a nihilist now this guy definitely end game level purely based on the fact that like that's what he is in the comics and why well he's actually a space conquering badass like he's got mad powers. Now, when it comes down to his powers, I mean, he's got superhuman strength, agility, speed. He's durable, which is just an awkward thing to just have as a super thing, I guess. And like his reflexes as well. And like his stamina, which, you know, is, is useful for some things. I mean, to be fair, the exoskeleton that he has is the thing that kind of really grants him that durability and also grants him flight. So, you know, he's kind of got like, you know, your, your basic set of super powers yeah and when he's got the cosmic control rod he's actually got things like molecular manipulation energy blasts and slowed aging process so those are also pretty useful things so not only is he like hella powerful i mean what's nice about him which is probably the, the thing that isn't nice about him is the fact that he visually looks different he looks like a giant bug i personally don't really like his aesthetics but i get like that people do like it and I get that it'd be fresh and different for us to see something like that on the big screen in the MCU in terms of villain because a lot of the heroes and villains that we have had so far in the MCU have pretty been human-esque and like even with Thanos and his purple ball sack chin he's still human-esque for the most part whereas Annihilus is very buggy in his face and he's got um depending on the variation that they go with his arms are pretty um bug-like and so on yes they, they still they, he still has like the limbs four limbs the arms legs and so on but the overall package is not really that human-esque at least in comparison to what we've had before so where does he come from in terms of the mcu basis well now that thanos is out of the way it's something that he could very well have known about or heard about after this has happened and now that he's been you know you know he's gone he's it's done he says you know what let me try and just take over the world not just try and make it a better place he doesn't care about that let's just take over and conquer everything that my eyes set on and just rule this with an iron fist that would be a, a different take um you'd have to still kind of humanize him as to why he wants to do that which is what made Thanos such a great villain was that he was humanized and you could empathize and you could sympathize with where he was coming from you may not agree with his method but you understood where he was coming from I think the best story arc to use for um Annihilus would be Annihilation and to be fair that could actually be part of the Nova plot if they introduce him as a character Annihilation basically is a huge all-out space war Things go down with uh, the Shi'ar Empire, I believe. Um, I think Inhumans are a little bit involved, a little bit. It's been a while since I read Annihilation, but things go down. You've got Nova, you've got Star-Lord, you've got Gamora for a little bit. It's crazy what's going on with there, and it'd be a great story. And definitely, like I said, endgame level um, stuff. Next on this list, we have what's actually probably my favorite of the villains that are in this top five, and that is Doctor Doom. Definitely Avengers level um, threats um, because of the, the things that he does wields, which I will go into. And he could very well be an end game level threat. Like it's, you would have to really build up to it. He may end up being sort of like a kind of a Loki type character where he's a villain, villain, villain kind of thing, but not sure. But why Doctor Doom? He is a mystical, and a technical badass. And to be fair to um, the character of Doctor Doom, he's had three movies. Well, sort of. He's had like the the OG, like early 2000s um, Fantastic Four uh, trilogy. 
the movie and, and they weren't that good. They had good parts and bad parts, but on average they weren't that good and they didn't really do them justice. And with Fantastic Four movie, the Fan Four Tester movie that had the greatness of Michael B. Jordan and all the other great actors. I think Miles Tanner was in that movie. He was Mr. Fantastic and the chick whose name I can never remember, but she's in a lot of things. Omara, I think it is. Doctor Doom was in that movie and he just was not done any sort of justice. And I think the MCU now with what they built can give him that justice. Powers for him. I'm going to read these off right now because there's a lot of them. All right, so we've got genius level intellect. He hella smart. Technopathy. Technopathy? Technopathy? You can like, you know, control electronical equipment. Um, energy absorption and projection, mind transference and demonic summoning via dark mysticism and sorcery. So that's where that mystical badassery comes from. And obviously you have the technopathy, techno badass. And that's just him having knowledge. I mean, he's got the armor, or at least one piece of the armors that he's got. It's got a superhuman strength and durability, gauntlet, tasers, and force blast, finger lasers. If you know what that's from, comment in the section below. It's like the best thing ever. Um, he's got flight via the rocket boots, a force regeneration, which is really cool as well, and various high-tech weapons and gadgets. I just have to read that list off because there's a lot of powers that he has. So even just on the Avengers level, it's great. I mean, if you saw Spider-Man Far From Home, you could see what Mysterio was doing and it was very Dr. Doomish the way they did it. But if you take that to the next level, it's going to be crazy with what they can do with him and show how smart Doctor Doom really is. In terms of like comics, to be perfectly honest, when it comes to Doctor Doom, he's dealt with pretty much every hero, villain, everything in between, anti-hero, anti-villain, whatever it is, Doctor Doom has probably dealt with that character at least on one panel and probably even more. But the comic book that he did start in is Fantastic Four, so it'd be nice to have the Fantastic Four movie introduce him as a villain. You can probably even hint him in earlier the same way that Stephen Strange was hinted in in um, Captain America. Hint at Victor Von Doom as the individual in another movie then have them be the villain in Fantastic Four and done properly. I think a good way to um introduce Victor Von Doom or Doctor Doom, well not even introduce him but a good way to use him, make, a, make him a sympathetic king because he's the ruler of the country of Latveria. You could kind of make him sort of the Iron Man for that country but be a bit more tyrannical and ruling with an iron fist as opposed to the genius billionaire playboy philanthropist that Tony Stark is. Which lends itself well to a story arc for Doctor Doom, which is the infamous Iron Man. There's a lot that goes into that, but I'm I'm not that kind of channel, so I can't go on that too much for you. But it does, it definitely does lend itself well to him being an Iron Man-esque type character, but on the darker side of that. Another way that you could introduce him in, in a character type way, still being the ruler of Latveria, or is it Latvia? It's one of the two and I can never remember. Comment in the section below which one it is. I'm gonna keep saying both of them because I can't remember right now. Um, but yes, a good way to introduce him would be um, having him in the Black Panther movie as two warring kings. Because if you look at it, you've got Black Panther who rules Wakanda and he's now just come out as an, a nation, a very valued nation, because this is where Vibranium comes from. And then Doctor Doom wants some of that sweet Vibranium. And it could be the tale of two kings. However, You've also got Namor, which probably is a better fit for that because they have a lot of history in, in the comics. And I'll probably end up doing a video on why Namor should be in, in the MCU as well. So watch out for that. However, it will not be before my Beta Ray Bill video. Do not worry about that, my street people. I got you on Beta Ray Bill. It's coming. In terms of the nation of Latveria or Latvia, I think what is great for it would be that it's a neighboring country for Sokovia, where in Age of Ultron, Ultron pretty much tried to drop the country on the world to cause the extinction level event. Sokovia uh, being next door to Latveria, Latvia is affected by this. And then that prompts Dr. Doom to go into some sort of not hiding, but like thought process of what he's going to do in the same way that Mysterio for Spider-Man had to wait for a couple of things. Dr. Doom has said, you know what, I'm going to do this. And then he comes out as Dr. Doom, the villain, as opposed to Victor Von Doom, the ruler and king of Latveria, Latvia. I think a really good story arc that would be done so well for Dr. Doom is Triumph and Torment. In that story, Dr. Doom actually teams up with Stephen Strange, Dr. Strange, um, trying to save his mother. Uh, the reason for that would be like the basic history of it is that Dr. Doom's mother actually sacrificed her soul to Mephisto, I think it was, but basically her soul is sacrificed in order to protect Dr. Doom. A lot more goes into that, trust me, a lot more. I know it sounds confusing, but comic books are comic books. So I think that'd be really interesting. So you've got Dr. Doom, this kind of Iron Man-esque character, and you've got Stephen Strange in total mysticism. 
just teaming up together to actually save his mother for whatever reason they choose to adapt to the MCU would be amazing. On to our third one and speaking of Final Fantasy and their villains let's keep with the theme of that and we've got the Super Scroll Kurt. Now Kurt as himself the Super Scroll that he is total badass total shape-shifting badass at that he is himself uh an avengers level threat that's where he would come into this story however he would be part of a larger story arc definitely that would be end game level and we'll get into that in a moment okay in terms of powers i'm gonna read this off again because there is a reel of them so the first obvious one like i said shape-shifting he's a shape-shifter and within that superb impersonator so he can become anyone excellent tactician and hand-to-hand -hand combat um, competent pilot, superhuman strength, stamina, and durability. This is popping up a lot. Elasticity, pyrokinesis, flight, force field um, generation, shapeshifting, and hypnosis. Now, I'm pretty sure I haven't read a lot on Super Scroll and Kurt and so on, but a lot of that does stem from the fact that he's a Fantastic Four villain and the original people's powers that he did copy or had copied to him were the Fantastic Four. So pyrokinesis, stretchy, flight, invisibility, all those kind of things and the durability as well stem from the fantastic four comment section below again if i am incorrect in that information so like i said um he is a shape-shifting badass and he's fantastic four villain the super scrolls are not new to the mcu and captain marvel we did see them they were kind of the the sympathetic uh mistaken villains of that movie so we've seen a lot of the good scrolls and what they can do and coincidentally enough they use talos who in the comics actually can't shapeshift but he apparently is one of the best ones in the mcu but what else so we've seen them but what about the actual like you know bad scrolls the people that don't care for this situation and just trying to find a family and they're upset about what's happened with the kree and thinking that the scrolls are friendly to these uh people they're, they just want to take over and they just want their own world instead of looking at other places that are uninhabited they try and come over to earth how do they do that and that is where the super scroll kirk comes in and then we have secret invasion with this you could reintroduce the scrolls in terms of being negative uh and not so great people scrolls rather um and they want to take over so you introduce them probably in captain marvel however you don't really want that feel of repetition with just showing the scrolls again but this time they're bad it would probably be better starting them in the fantastic four movie or being introduced before that as something negative rather than just all the goodness that they've seen so far which i think is throwing us through a loop to show that eventually they will be bad so i think having them in another movie where they're leading up to the secret invasion which is going to be the best story arc for kurt the scroll which is where he'd be leading into being the end game level threat or more so part of the overall arc because secret invasion does involve with all the scrolls or a large portion of the scrolls taking over other superheroes from captain america iron man black widow as in jessica drew um black widow who is spider woman and also black widow just a bunch of superheroes are basically replaced by them and the whole tagline is who can you trust now i do appreciate that a similar story is told in captain america the winter soldier but this is on a much grander scale and not just a matter of can we control the people and make them safe it's literally we're taking over your planet and considering that right now that the scrolls are seen as this as of right now non-threatening um threat to earth i'm pretty sure that's a double negative i'm not sure but they're seen as this friendly set of people i'm pretty sure that that jerk reaction to yo the scrolls aren't as good as they seem to be would be immense in the mcu if done right so anyway on to our next one we have king the conqueror number four on our list why king the conqueror because he's a space hopping badass there is a theme going on here with badassery that's that's what i'm getting with this king the conqueror now i think that let's see well i think he he could be end game level but he could also he, he rides that thin line of end game level and avengers level threat in terms of the mcu because of how his powers work some of the other villains could be maybe a bit lower avengers level um, where they're just kind of coming out like when you've got Loki. A lot of these villains before could sort of add that kind of as the Loki thing and then become Avengers threat. But this guy, no, he can't be below Avengers level at all. Okay, um, listing of powers again, reading this off the bat, let's look at this. Expert historical scholar, being from the future, it makes it really easy. And when you can space hop, definitely works. Um, time travel, like I said before. Genius level intellect, which a lot of super villains do tend to have. Skilled tactician and hand-to-hand -hand combatant. 
Resistance to radiation, useful. Access to advanced technology, because he's from the future. Highly advanced battle armor that grants enhanced strength, energy, hologram, and force field projection. 30 day supply of air and food. That's thinking ahead. That is really smart. Ability to control other forms of technology. So similar to technopathy, but also probably not as good, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, Will sapping ray gun as Rama touch. So he's, he's been a number of different people and Will sapping ray gun. That's, that's, that's really mean. You don't want to sap people's will. What are you, a green lantern? Or, well, I guess more Sinestro core rather than green because Anyway, let's talk about his actual comic book origin. He's actually from the future. He's from Other Earth in the 31st century, I believe it is. And as stated already, he is a time hopper. He can travel through time. How he does manage to travel through time is through a time machine that Dr. Doom did create. Prior to him discovering this uh, time machine, he is obsessed with time and that is why he ends up discovering it. So in the MCU, you've kind of got two ways of dealing with this. So the first one, which is, I think, taking you into that further kind of actions and consequences issue that they did have in Endgame and it wasn't fixed properly. You've got this entity of Kang the Conqueror that has arrived because of all the time stuff that has happened from the Doctor Strange movie and then you've got the Infinity War all the time that happened in that and then obviously Endgame all the time travel that happened in that movie he's affected because he's upset with the flow of time and how it's happening and then this entity is created and then you've got Kang the Conqueror that has come about through this time and just a story to say that he's from the future if you want to or however that works out but he is created because of the avengers and that's what's so cool so you have like a lot of the time you you can say that heroes create their villains and a lot of people do say that about batman and definitely true for tony stark many villains in the mcu have been created because of tony stark like mysterio um that dude in iron man 3 you've got ultron which is partially because of tony uh, Seth Killian, no, not Seth Killian, he's a fighting game guy, but a number of characters in the MCU that are villains were created because of Tony Stark in some way or another. So with this, you've got the Avengers that in the midst of saving the world, are literally in the midst of saving the world, and they're trying to put everything back together in the way it should be, they have then created another villain that the new set of Avengers then have to deal with. Or you could just have him finding a time machine from the future because he's obsessed with time and he wants to be a hero, I guess, or he just wants to go and experience the villains and the heroes fighting each other. And he finds a time machine, which could be replaced by the time stone if you really want to keep that like kind of theme going, but it's probably better to create something new. And then he goes back in time and he's trapped and things go down. Or he finds Dr. Doom's time machine if they decide to do that. That also works. Next circle, I think would probably be the Kang Dynasty where his son um, and himself, his son is named Marcus, they want to take over Earth in its current form to actually stop it from one of the possible darker features that it has. So he, again, he could be that sympathetic hero, but I don't think this guy should be a sympathetic hero. I think we need someone that's a downright villain for this or someone that's out for correcting something, but in a very horrible way. And finally for this, probably de depending on how you want to define it, the strongest villain on this and Whilst not my personal favorite, I can see he is definitely a fan favorite, absolutely, and people have been clamoring for this since the original Fantastic Four movie back in the early 2000s. We've got Galactus, the purple man, who isn't, like, not the purple man, but you see what I'm getting at. He's giant purple and he's got the helmet, pretty dope stuff. Why Galactus? Because he's a badass planet eater. I mean, he's huge and he eats planets. And of course he's endgame level stuff. It's not gonna be anything lower. It can never be anything lower unless you really readjust his character, but endgame level only. So when it comes to his powers, I mean, it's it's really weird because he's got the power cosmic. He's got mastery of the power cosmic and the power cosmic, as far as I know in my research and everything, has never really been described as anything, but yeah, and he's got cosmic awareness. So yeah, he's, he's got that going on, but in terms of like tangible powers, he's got teleportation, telepathy, telekinesis, transmutation. He's, he's got a whole bag of powers, including many others, but like the main thing is he is a cosmic entity. He's kind of like that balance between eternity and death, or at the very least, he's kind of meant to balance them. So he's kind of important to the, to the Marvel universe, which you do see in the story Annihilation. So all of that could culminate into one thing. If you've got Annihilus and Galactus and you could have someone that replaces Thanos's character 
it'd be pretty damn interesting. So for a bit of like comic book origin, just like a brief one, Galactus as a character was originally a, a kind of a, a spacefaring man. He, he, he traveled throughout space. It was a man by the name of Galen and he ended up flying too close to a star and that's how he ended up getting his powers. What's interesting about that is that he, he actually existed in the universe before the current one. He was there during the Big Bang and now he's in this current universe as Galactus. So as for his introduction into the MCU, how do we do that? I think definitely hinting at him in other movies, showing him in non-Earth based movies is probably the best bet that you have because there's been nothing from what I can tell um, introduced in the MCU. You've had uh, the the Rod of Eternity, I think it was, um, or the, the Staff of Eternity, I think in Doctor Strange. And then you've got um, Star-Lord talking about being able to see Eternity, which could be any meaning of anything, whatever, but you do have hints at these concepts of characters that are just grander than just superhero, supervillain fights. So have them hinted in as actual Galactus, the devourer of planets on other planets would be amazing. And the way to introduce him would probably be in a Silver Surfer movie. We've got Noran Rad, who is a Silver Surfer. So how Noran Rad actually became the Silver Surfer was Galactus went to his planet and he decided to give up his life to be a herald so his planet, his people, the people that he loved as well, including his partner, could survive to live and fight another day. And then he becomes the Silver Surfer. The characters in this movie that you would use would probably be uh, another Herald of Galactus, which could be Fire Lord, Airwalker, Terax, any number of them that have come before or after Silver Surfer could be one of the Heralds at that time. And he ends up taking their place or he ends up just having more than one Herald so he can scout more planets at a time. And then you can introduce Silver Surfer into other movies with him coming to Earth scouting the planet. So his best story arc is probably Galactus the Devourer. I mean, it's pretty much a straightforward title for an end game level movie, an end game level villain. Basically in the story, all the superheroes come together because they're, they're basically tired of waiting for Galactus to come to their planet and eat them. So all the heroes, Avengers, X-Men, Fantastic Four, the Shi'ar Empire, the Kree, the Skrulls, everyone that's basically tired of Galactus just coming to devour their planet comes out and it's a huge throwdown of nothing but carnage and fights and more similar to how the end game movie was at the end but you have so many more superheroes in this one comic book movie and it'd be amazing oh also speaking of heralds nova was actually a herald of galactus at one point so that'd be pretty cool to see that you could adjust that as well that'd be pretty cool anyways dudes so we're actually near the end of this video so before we jump into the ending like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share it with your friends, enemies, family. Gonna be videos in this area here and so on. Like I said, subscriptions. Dudes, I still don't have a sign off yet, so uh, peace.